Hello friends, Dr. Larry Mitnall, your friendly neighborhood child and adult psychiatrist. Now, you may have heard that there's an election coming up in the US, go figure. Uh, if you've been following the channel, then you're aware of my general recommendation for families and for kids not to allow their lives to be just completely consumed by media and to avoid featuring kind of an endless parade of woe for our kids. And so many things have been contributing to the rise in depression and anxiety among adults and the kids that we see. And this is one I still hear all too often. So I thought, let's talk. Let's talk about strengthening your mental health and a few great ways to cope with whatever the results are on November 3rd, 4th, or soon after-ish, however that happens. Um, and so I want you to stay tuned till the end of the video to get all of the tips and how to apply them to your life and help you to be prepared uh, for this really interesting season. And while we're thinking about doing your civic and patriotic duties um, stress-free, don't forget to cast your ballot for this channel by smashing the like button. Again, um, we appreciate you doing that because when you comment, like, um, subscribe, that helps us to grow and helps us to reach more families with um, messages of resilience and encouragement. So with that said, let's jump to it. All right, so jumping into a few of my favorite things um, for helping you to make it through this interesting season um, with some peace. The first thing I'd say and recommend for your consideration is don't fire your friends, okay? Our social groups and families are likely the anchors of our lives. Um, they are the group you have relied on for support through many hardships, death, injury, accidents, financial distress, whatever that is. And so when you reflect on the joy and support they have added to your life, it's probably overwhelming. And so our brains, however, are often at risk for what's called recency bias. What is that? So you may remember that Janet Jackson song, you know, what have you done for me lately? Uh, which is really, in many ways, the perfect summary for what happens. Uh, maybe your friend uh, skewed more red or more blue than you would have liked. Um, and so I want you to reject the impulse to completely dismiss that relationship uh, based on their most recent decision. We need our friends and often they are the bulwark. They are the pillars against feelings of isolation and despair. My second piece of encouragement is to avoid bludgeoning everyone you know with your emotional state, no matter how valid. Uh, Dave Chappelle used to have a, a skit called When Keeping It Real Goes Wrong. And I think his finger was precisely on this point, um, that by sharing your feelings everywhere with everyone in every situation tends to either push people away or pull you into the company of those who, who will fan the flames of that emotion. Again, our emotions are vital. They're important, yes. Um, do our emotions help us to clue into realities in our world that sometimes even before our brains and cognitive processes have had a, a, a chance to pick out all the small details? Absolutely. Now, should our emotional lives be the captain of our thinking and being? Okay, that's a huge no. In fact, one of the hallmarks of maturity is how we handle disappointment and things not going our way. So let's model that certainly for our kids, for our neighbors. What I'm not saying is that you should have no emotion at all, right? Um, you are human. Humans have passions and are passionate about many things. And still, don't allow that emotion to curb your ability to still be kind to your neighbor or present for a friend. Instead, use that emotion to fuel you working harder towards supporting the things you still believe in and your chance to fight for them in future elections to come. And my final piece of encouragement is to act. Act with kindness, humility, and love. Most especially toward the neighbor whose political signs are different than yours. I mean, how does this help your mental health? Well, the alternative to right action is resentment, which tends to boil over and fester. An amazing therapist who, um, who was integral part of my training um, in residency would say something to this effect, which is, you know, resentment is like drinking poison and hoping that the other person gets sick. And so what does that look like? <clears throat> you know, how do, we, how do we live that out? Still going on that, that morning run with a friend, maybe. 
um, or checking in with your politically backwards and waywards cousin. You know, maybe that's um, still bringing groceries to the elderly person you know in your neighborhood who needs the extra you know precautions to be sure that they're um, not being infected. So avoid isolation, avoid canceling all events and, and work uh, to go in the morning of the election or whatever the results might be. Avoid destruction and violence. I mean, these can be toxic treatments which threaten to steal your overall peace. And as always, take good care, my friends. Please be well and go vote.